Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I'm going to talk about the new Pitch Shift Clones feature in uh, the M Sound Factory Sampler. So you're probably wondering, like, what, what is this? But uh, let me actually show you through demonstrating a common problem. So if I have a sampler here, and let's say I want to load a sample, like a vocal sample. So I'll just do something like this, drop it in here, do full import, like that. And I have it in here, and I can, of course, move this to wherever I want so it's not quite so big. Make sure it's loud enough and hopefully you can hear it. Uh... There you go. So that is my sample. But one of the problems is, imagine if I go up. So it's originally on C here, but as I go up the keyboard like this. Uh... 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 So you hear, the higher I play, the more unnatural it sounds. So this is oftentimes called Mickey Mousing. And this is kind of a problem. It doesn't sound good all the time. Although sometimes for like hip hop or something, I actually like this sound. But generally you don't want this. You want it to sound more natural. And of course, I could just sing in more notes or something and get more samples. But sometimes, of course, you don't have those extra samples. So I'll show you a way to kind of fix this. So let's say if we have this. And let me add just one more layer, actually. So just hit plus here. And I have another layer, and we can just go and move this until it's where we want it. I want it just about an octave above, like that. Here we go. Ooh, like that. And now I can drop another sample. I have just one more. That was a low C, and this is the high C. Import to selected region. There we go. So now I have two different samples. This is the low one. Uh, this is the high one. Uh, that one actually has a little bit of a delay, so what we're going to do is just move the start position up here. Stuff I went over before in the previous video, but uh, it's good to go over it again. Now, what I was talking about before, getting rid of this Mickey Mousing. So how do we do that? There's, you could, of course, make more samples yourself by just singing this again if you could. But let's say we can't do that or we don't want to do that. In my case, I'm just lazy. So let's go to menu here. Make sure we're clicked on uh, low C here. And if you look down here, it said generate pitch shifted clones. I'm actually using a beta, so I have some new features that maybe you won't see for a few days. But uh, anyways, here. So you see generate pitch shifted clones. Click on that. So now you see here at the very bottom, it says minimum key and maximum key. So this is going to give us the range of uh, how many samples we're going to use. So in this case, it goes down to, was it B2? But I can go down a little bit lower. Let's say G2 or something. Or actually, I can go down even lower. Like maybe down to the other low C or so. There we go. And so now I have a pretty big range. So I'm going up about an octave and down about an octave. Now you see here like keys per sample. What this is going to do is going to tell you how many samples you're going to make. If you have it on one, it means each key is going to be a new cloned sample. If I change it to two, that means it's going to use the same sample for every two keys. So C and C sharp will use the same sample. Three, it's going to be every three keys. So uh, C, C sharp, and D will be the same sample. So kind of test it out beforehand to see what it sounds like. So if I hit C, uh, that sounds okay, obviously. Uh, C sharp, that actually doesn't sound too bad. I'm not hearing too much Mickey Mousing. Uh, D, it's getting a little bit bad. Uh, D sharp, like that's way too much. So I think I'm going to leave it at two. I could go with three, but let's leave it at two. And keep formats. So this is what causes the Mickey Mousing. If I have it at zero, it's going to have Mickey Mousing. At 100%, it's going to get rid of it, but of course, this gonna, is going to depend on the instrument and your type of voice, etc. Sometimes you think, ah, 100% doesn't sound good, maybe at 50%. So just kind of do that by ear. But now we're going to just find a place wherever you want on your computer to put these. So I'll say here, MSF samples, and let's say C samples. Okay, now click OK. Now you see it actually generated these samples. So now I'm getting this. No Mickey Mousing there. Let me go down an octave so I can hear what it sounds lower. Uh, 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 uh. 
That's a little bit too low. Maybe I shouldn't have gone down that low. Uh, 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 so going down lower didn't work quite as well. So if we want to, we can just get rid of all these. And, oh, yeah, like this. And I can just delete these if I think I don't like them. Like that. And I can do the same thing up here for the high C, like this. And I'll just use generate pitch shifted clones, have everything in here. So it actually highlights the uh, uh, region so you don't have to mess with all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I'll go in, find the exact same place, see samples, hit OK. Now I have it in higher notes too. Uh, uh. This one sounds a little bit artificial anyways because I, I probably put too much uh, pitch tuning on this. But the reason I wanted to do that is to show you some things you can do with the vibrato here. So if I have uh, like a stable note like this. Uh, uh, there's not too much vibrato. But I can go in here and hit vibrato and we can mess with this until it sounds a little bit more natural. Uh, uh, So, there we go. Now we're getting some vibrato. I can also change the per voice phase to random, so each one has its own uh, randomness as far as phase goes. And then I can also do some other things in here, like do this and set this up to, let's say, true random. I'll just set it just a little bit so each voice isn't going at the exact same speed, like this. Uh So now I'm getting a little bit more vibrato. It sounds a little bit more natural. And of course, I could do you know more with this. Like let's say if I want to go into here and choose unison, uh, get out my it, choir preset, turn this all the way up, and I can try to create almost like a choir effect like this. Uh -huh. Okay, hopefully it's kind of stressing out my computer there, so I, I should stop. But I think you get the idea. You can do a lot with that. I did all that just from two samples. So by doing this, you can create lots of different sounds. There's a lot you can do with this. And I used vocal samples here, but of course you can use any other instrument. So this is great when you have just like one or two samples and you can't get any more and you want to create something you know, new and interesting that sounds like a real instrument. So hopefully this gave you an idea of things you can do with this and how to use it. Uh, if it did, Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.